I lost my place. And it's a really weird concept to describe because it's backwards. So the idea is that we perceive the originating elements or at least uh, forces of what creates this world, this life, whatever's happening here to be in here. Or, But the point is, it's like an Ouroboros or merry-go-round if you believe that because you know what began the first thing that began the first thing that began the first thing there's no end it doesn't it's just a loop but you run in circles doing that the first heat wave the first explosion the first uh, chemical you know uh, composition that resulted in something that was needed amino acids and proteins that was eventually needed for life okay well where's the first one to begin with that if you say the big bang okay well then what was the first big bang if you say nothing well then that doesn't make any sense um because it there's i'm not going to get into it but there's paradoxes that result because again, if it was the Big Bang, then what's to come? Either Big Crunch or further expansion. If it's further expansion, then you have to have something to describe where it's going and where the energy is coming from. If it's the Big Crunch, then there's probably more than one Big Bang. It's always, it doesn't make sense physically. The idea is that the cause, the, the nature of the requirements for it initially come out of a higher dimension, just the same way that when everything goes off and is out of our perceptual view and our technological uh, sensory view, that it goes into these subtle, refined uh, energy uh, spectrums or sensitivity levels that are veritably out of our perspective or out of our universe entirely but must still exist in some way shape or form and that's eventually time how we it's out of our view of time the brain wave of the first plesiosaurus which could all just be a mock-up by the way according to what some of these secret societies say um they, you know, the first brain waves are echoing out towards past Neptune by now, uh, and so uh, if it works that way, and if it made it through the uh, Van Allen belt and the magnetosphere, imagine that. Well, only the best brain waves, the most harmonized, the most literally like a uh, tank shell carrying the most oomph, the most power, the most direction, the most force, make it out of the solar system. Everything else gets sucked back in, and we have to try again. Imagine that only Buddha makes it or something like that anyway. Um, but the idea is that if it's still out there, just like you, you ring out a gong or something and you know in an hour you can't hear it anymore, who's to say if you didn't take a massively powerful sensing device and you know look at the finite atomic vibrations, oscillations that are in a leaf or in the air around it but are so expanse and so g drowned out it would be like uh, the size of a city at that point the the shell of the the sonic wave if you had some way to te to technically look at it you'd probably find some information they actually did tests with this where they found the recordings of voices that were recorded into pots being made and certain things like that and so um you know, sensing those vibrations are, are down to a to a level like that, but it's just the point is that it's out of our reach temporally, perspectively, because of our physical biological system, but that has nothing to do with the fact of whether it's still there or not. And then you look at the fact that we're only seeing linearly in time because of that sensory system, then the moment that it actually happened, well that still exists. That's still just on some some other plane, some other time scale that we don't have access to anymore. Um, you know, there's an overall frequency. You say that one event goes out and you can track the frequency of and increase the sensitivity. Like uh, you, you have a sound at the end of a song and it's like the sound is going down. Well, you turn your speakers up and you, you can keep that sound all the way there and you keep turning up and up and up and where it would normally be like the end where it's the most silent part, you have it still audible. Okay, so imagine you're doing that with the uh, whatever the the target frequency you're looking at okay well you're isolating the target frequency by doing that and looking at that frequency and while in relation to everything else everything else is still going on forward but you're still trying to rewind the sensitivity or increase it and pull out what's basically leaving us in time so imagine you had a large enough system where you could do that with an entire civilization an entire planet that's how the temporal viewing devices work where they roll everything back and if everyone is in a bubble or whatever you know you want to look at it as to the point where they're within that field, but they're also stabilized in accordance to themselves. You have to have some, you have to have a bubble within a bubble where everybody there is going to actually remember it because everybody on the outside of that bubble, when everything gets jumped back, no one remembers it. It's only the people that are inside of some type of inner protective field. But the idea is if you do it to a whole civilization and turn the volume up while the time is echoing back, you end up going back into the echo of where it began. I don't know how much that makes sense to people who don't think about these things but that's how it's done the point is our home realm is just like that 
it was there in the beginning, it'll be there in the end. It's connected right now through the most subtlest of vibrations that we no longer have access to unless we shut out the densest aspects of this world and our conscious mind and tap into that, what resonates with only the most inner part of ourselves, basically empathy on a frequency-wise level. And so that's like our, our blueprint, a uh, home base, excuse me, that uh, everybody has access to their own. And so the idea is that it flip-flops because the idea is, stay with me here, when done properly from within this matrix, the lower level basically trapped behind the wall of time, behind the singularity where everything is forever happening but we can't actually access the the source of what's happening and we can't access an area of time outside of our anchor point to the physical body, which just means it's uh, biologically rendered. Okay, we, we, so imagine some of these systems, these computer systems, you can get out of biological rendering, you can actually access the echo from that first plesiosaurus. Um, it's the time viewing, but imagine then you look at your first echoes. That's where shit gets weird, excuse me, but that's where you basically go into these soul realms where it's parts of you that have always existed, that have always been there and always will be there. And as we have access through our DNA, through uh, our, our ability to discern the very finite frequencies and turn that dial up or down within we and through the DNA that's like the great amp who can do it and who doesn't do it as well listen to yourself it's really all it is access to some realm of the subconscious where everything is rendered out of mind and in that sense all possibilities that occur have happened will happen or could happen are accessible as easy as flipping a channel or something it's just all mental and, uh, but the idea is if you could have all the one or the other, or whatever direction it is, there's usually, uh, well, there is one that is always going to be there. And it's not because of preference or what you would do in this situation or what you do when you get bored and you eventually that runs out and you do this. It's what would, is just always there because it's basically what you need on a soul level. And so that's the home base. And so when done properly from within the matrix, you create an access point to that realm by basically going within and accessing just your own refined sense of self and turning that dial up, okay? And uh, you create a bubble of space time and awareness and partially, probably, uh, possibly consciousness. And from within that bubble, you navigate the realm of this in between physical and non physical existence. And you basically bend the bubble, just like a UFO, same thing, with your intent through the realm to this timeless view and when you get good at that basically when you get familiar with that what happens is that you can bend space and time maximally and call, it's just like a parabola and all these science experiments and geometries and, and weird you know mathematical equations where certain paradoxes would have to happen in order for it to occur but theoretically it would have to be possible where basically you can turn a bubble inside out you can turn a circle inside out if you like fold it the right way and unfold it you know it'll flip inside out just look at on searching on the internet uh, but it's the same thing you know it just comes from thought experiments but the idea is you can do that with the bubble that you've created as your own home base time dimension beyond time and instead of this matrix being uh, around you and your bubble being within the matrix which can't be because nothing originates here you go to the right way and it's just like the same way of inverting consciousness whereas you can't be here you're obviously the larger spirit out there it inverted to get here you revert out to basically face the universe again the way you should which is in a spiritual form and what happens with that bubble is it flips inside out and logically consciously it must be that you're in the home base right now and this whole universe is within a tiny little bubble you've created in that original soul realm and you're experiencing physicality through and so uh, when you do that you basically gain control over certain facets of the realm that we always had access to and we've been basically led to consciously chopping off these control systems these these powers and uh, so the artificial realm becomes the inner to what was seemingly at first the outer side of the bubble. And then this realm is a small artificial or distorted virtual reality bubble within a much larger reality that is actual and as well the larger actual reality is soul. It's comprised of soul energy and soul awareness. It's like 
I don't want to get into this or in Alex Gray pictures, but where it's just one face that goes on forever, that's what it's like. And each one is a different life or a different realm and possibility. In other words, you go in and it's like a computer system or something and you're looking around and instead of having the curb and the road and the grass and the bird and then you, and it's like, well, I'm walking around and this is not me stuff on the ground and then there's me. It's literally all you. All You look over there, there's your eye. You look that way, there's your face. You look that way, there's a forehead and a nose. You look that way, there's your mouth. It's literally just one big you and that's it. And you're inside yourself and everything, everything you can come up with is inside you. Every realm, every possibility, every place, every dimension, every other person, it's all one being. And, uh, and it's really strange, but the idea is that you create the place, you create the connection, you create your remembrance of it in order to access it because it's as if it's already there. It's as if we're all still already there and it's as if that's only the only thing that's ever happened that's all always been happening. It sounds paradoxical, it sounds fanatical, it sounds like mytholo uh, mythology and lore, but that's the point that this realm is wrapped within that. So all the lore and mythology that we perceive on the far ends of space-time and possibility, that's actually what we're within. All of it is like that. This is just a small little temporal bubble where all that stuff is chopped out and it's chopped out part of this, uh, as part of this experiment, but the idea is it hurt people because now they're gonna get hit with the wave of all this weird stuff going on, which they've been hiding and hiding and hiding, again, to try and protect people a lot of the time because they know people aren't going to make sense of this you know the soldiers that go through it have to have such training and mental conditioning to the point where they'll just snap if they haven't had that like literally you can you know is this are you sure this is the right thing to do all right go take you see that marine special forces whatever show him and it's just like bubbling on the ground crying and like snobbing you're sniveling and stuff okay well yeah some of the mental conditioning is required because humanity will not make it otherwise which is strange and borderline insane but it's how it works because we have just been brought down to such a disconnected level where our creativity is basically being decided for us that future game well that's what's happening the same thing with them looking at the device to the future okay we're gonna do this well, how do you know well i went to the future and saw that's what i did so you didn't decide based upon that's what you want to do well take a note well they're creating a time loop when they do that so what happens is when people are looking at the media and the media is telling them everything that they're going to do next and everything that's going to happen and what's going to what they're what they're, excuse me what to think okay they're, they're the same thing they're degrading themselves and becoming assimilated into that hive mind technological system and so uh but that's the basis of it it seems like a magical feat but that's the nature of how it works and the in path back uh, out or out back into the real you go in you don't go out to find it this of course I didn't even get to the second page maybe I'll put up another video I told you it's real hard to order this stuff because it doesn't you know nothing equates to this type of information but take that that little segment about DNA as a consciousness transtemporal link like a quantum internet between the planes between the possibilities the consciousness of watchers being stored within the dna of operatives traveling through the living mind field of these people with these entities basically stalking them and as well being transmitted through the mind field that's why they have to interact with the mind in order to get this to spread and as well there are certain people that are immune and as well some of the projects found the immunity so it's, I don't talk about a lot of that just because it's ongoing operations. It's something you don't do. You don't talk about ongoing operations. However, a lot of it is, I'm supposed to talk about it, that the cure was why this is all happening and why it all happened. To find the cure, to find immunity, to secure humanity's future. <clears throat> and as well as answer all these questions, which could probably didn't need to be answered because they also opened up these links, these other realms where these problems happened. But the main problem was some trauma and some degradation back then where they said all this stuff is impossible. And that's what built up this barrier between the person and themselves and will eventually, when it all comes out, cause a complete fracture of the psyche. That's the actual problem. That's why all this has to come out and people have to get strong in knowing that shit's a lot crazier than any movie you could imagine, but not because anybody made it that way, just because what are you anyway? You're floating around through space, moving through hyperspace and a temporal dimension navigated by biological perception, which is highly illusory anyway, and stuck in a duality based consciousness modality of basically slave victim mentality based upon higher and lower awareness, this, that, and the other. 
as, as crazy as it could be anyway. We just have blinders on to make it seem like that, that makes sense. Yeah, and then we're also just going to war because we look funny and talk different. No, that's the 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 end result. What we have now, and that's why they also made it like this. It's like they can pull the carpet out. And it's like, see, we we're just protecting you. What we have now is ten times crazier than interdimensional beings and time loops and you know CERN devices. What we have now, when it's just supposed to be normal, that's insane. That's insanity. It makes no fucking sense whatsoever, and everybody's killing each other. Okay, so that's the the crazy part. That's also the wet reason why it was set up like this. It's like they they get the last laugh, and as well, they own the part of the system, kind of like the soul field system, to the point where if everybody's like you know f you secret societies, which the secret societies are going to be exposed. That was part of it. They're all, all the secrecy gets exposed. That's how it goes. And they've done their part. You know, they're not going to get, you know, like lit on fire or anything like that, but the game is over. They did their part. That This part of the grand design has been reached. Um, and so, uh, but the point is that now if anybody's like, you know, F you, it's all your fault, all they got to do is say, well, look over there. And it's the massive interdimensional portals and war going on between spiritual realms. And they're like, you know, well, we didn't make that. We were just the one hiding it from you. So it's like, okay, well, you can't say anything at that point uh, unless you've been 100 percent on the ball which the majority of people that would talk shit have not been that's why they're talking shit um so yeah, and then the parasitic entities the act of removing them is simply the act of coming to full awareness of those puppet strings being tugged and pulled and realizing they trace back to something that's external that's the whole point and uh then these these parties these rituals okay guess what they're excitotoxin response fueled by stimulating the r complex and causing an electrical storm which n mutates the consciousness and mind the dna our society is one big ritual interconnected from sports to political stuff to basically that's really all you get to every weekend when it's uh, mating season basically these are rituals to designed to bring out the lower desires and warp the personality and so then uh, ima you imagine where your basically where you're going and coming from but you don't use a device to do it you do it based upon who you want to be and who you feel who you feel you already are and you actually create and connect with that possibility the highest version of that is when you create your home realm that you re not retreat to but you you like uh you you uh not escape to but you you, you take cover to you um take shelter and i can't think of the word and you assess the situation from there like a control system and that's your soul realm that already exists and that's that and when you do it enough eventually you get it flip-flops the singularity of being here and traveling to there and it turns around on you and all of a sudden you realize you've always been here in the soul realm not here but you've been in the soul realm and you've traveled to here and this becomes your secondary place this becomes the vacation meaning time inverts it's the strangest thing but that's what happens you you end up meeting eternity in that other realm and then DNA is the gateway to that whether it's degraded or passing uh, th with a light into uh, transference capability and when people have reunified and their aspects of the soul have reunified and the, their soul family on the plane reunified they, it becomes literally like such a power such a uh, the light emission and such a it's like a torsion field um, like the early craft, such a spatio-temporal distortion that it becomes like a UFO. And wherever everybody's, you know, holding hands, thinking about where the home base is or where they're going to go and what they're going to become, it warps this reality to the person. So you have like a simulator where that's the administrative value, that's the administrative password or the administrative rights account, that it's soul tied together in sympathetic union. That's the administrator of the realm. Uh, it can be overwritten by the dark forces, but only when the soul people are just like, eh, what's on TV? You know, who are we blowing up yet, you know, today? When they're doing that, of course, they're not going to be in control. That's perfect, beautiful. It's a safeguard. Why would it be? They're clearly insane and not aware of themselves or anything that's going on or the principles of, you know, creation. So that's when the inverted, negative, not self-aware entities of the shadow mind, the demiurge, can take control. And that's what's happened for the past two to six to ten thousand years they've been running these loops and doing all this stuff with the maximal highest form of technology abusing all of this the possibilities through their knowledge of the spirit and mind control and the uh the soul of reality of that and what you could call psychology and warping through language and every aspect of society to use it 
humanity as a type of earth ship and a soul ship for their own liking through hyperspace to give or to, to result arrive at the destination that they choose and uh, this is basically branched from them being stripped of their connection to the organic by branching into these 4d realms of immortalization and basically being co-opted themselves by these entities that thrive off of fear and thus the fear of them and the desire of them and they're trying to repeat the process by getting and roping the humans into it but the point is they can never get all of humanity because if they did the whole experiment goes kaput because the end result is the beginning and if the end result that we don't lead to uh, you know is something else and altered than the beginning is and we never be began here at, at all we never began to we're never here to begin with excuse me and it's like a time loop so it's also like a safeguard that is done like that everything is just an experiment everything is just a show all life is just a, a type of game because the beginning is the end and the end is the beginning but not when it's technologically done when it's technologically done it f's everything up because it's not meant to to mix that way there's going to be more to talk about from AI, from merging to AI, from what happens with the transhumanist singularity, uh, all these possibilities, how that can't be the end result because we've already gotten to that point. That's why there's so many errors and, and uh, glitches, if you will, in the overall continuity to the point where we're supposed to be merging with higher levels, higher planes, those refined realms that acts, have all access to all of time and the first plesiosaurus. And well, they, the higher than that level of, you know, you go back through time to get to the beginning. Well, even higher than that, you get the parallel one that was right next to it. And then next and next, and you get a pinnacle of all possibilities from what happened in the past to what happened in parallels to eventually what happened in the future. And you just like a pyramid triangle of something of all possibilities in the highest realm and we're supposed to be navigating higher and higher to that starting with the civilization moving okay a less asshole -ish, more friendly more reasonable more intellectual and uh, empathic version of ourselves and, and, and all the way up to the point of basically like a god level instead it's been held off for so long it's part of this game system where they're thriving on the the suffering it's just like a kid pooping his pants over and over again and liking the way it feels which becomes like a fetish it's basically what happened um, all right, I'm going to make another video because this one went on and I have another page here that is equally as uh, rambly and important. Thank you.